Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about Raid. Uh, wait, no, n not that Raid. Uh, today we're going to be talking about... Oh, uh, actually I'm being told that I'm not important enough to sell out like that yet. Eh, fair enough. Today we're going to be talking about redundant arrays of independent disks. This is a technology that allows you to take multiple hard drives and present them to a computer or to a server or whatever as one large storage volume through a variety of means that we'll discuss today. Now a normal setup has your PC or your server or whatever which is hooked up to a storage controller and that storage controller is connected to one storage medium. In this case it's a hard drive but it could be a USB external drive or a flash drive or something like that and the computer will have some data that it wants to store, so it'll pass it to the storage controller, which will write it to the hard drive, or flash drive, or whatever. And if it wants to read that data, it'll communicate with the storage controller, which will read the data from the drive and pass it back to the computer. Simple enough. Same thing happens when it wants to add some new data, represented here by another color. Computer, storage controller, drive. And if it needs to replace some data, again, it communicates with the storage controller, and replaces that data. And for erasing it, well this is oversimplifying it a little, but the storage controller does that too. But what if we want to use multiple drives on the same controller? We can do this for speed reasons or for fault tolerance reasons, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But for that, a regular storage controller just won't do. For that, we need a RAID controller. A RAID controller has multiple slots for multiple drives and depending on how much money you want to spend and what kind you need you can get them for regular two and a half inch SATA drives like these are or full-blown 20 bay enterprise SAS drives it really depends on your needs and how much disposable income you have but every RAID controller somehow spreads the data across multiple drives but the exact way in which it does that well that's up to you we're going to discuss the most common options right now We'll start with RAID 0, also known as Striped. For this setup, you need at least two drives, but we're going to use three just to kind of illustrate the point a little bit better. So the way that RAID 0 works is it spreads the data evenly across the drives by splitting the data up into chunks called stripes. And we'll show you how that works here. Let's say that our computer has created some data that it wants to write to what it thinks is one storage volume. So it'll pass it to the RAID controller, and what the RAID controller does with RAID 0 is it cuts the data up into as many hard drives as there are in the actual array. And it distributes the data like so. And when the computer wants the data back, well it communicates with the RAID controller, and what the RAID controller does is it requests all the chunks of data from the drives, puts it back together, and then presents that whole data to the computer. Remember, the data is actually stored on the drives like this. Now let's say the computer has some more data that it wants to write. It brings that data to the RAID controller, and again, the RAID controller splits it up across as many hard drives as there are, and writes it like so. Now, remember I said that you needed a minimum of two drives for this setup. So let's run through this again using the minimum of two drives just to see how it changes things. The computer creates some data, it passes it to the RAID controller, and this time the RAID controller just splits it in half because there's only two drives. So let's get our three drive example just set back up real quick so we can talk about why on earth you would ever want to set this up. In a word, speed. The reason that you would want to split your data up like this is because RAID controllers can think much, much faster than hard drives can read and write data. So when the computer requests, say, the yellow data, each drive only has to spend a third of the time it normally would collecting that information and passing it back to the RAID controller. The RAID controller then reassembles it and passes it to the computer, and as far as the computer is concerned, it's now able to read and write to the volume that it sees three times faster. Which is great, because regular spinning hard drives are incredibly slow, and they need every bit of help they can get. The other advantage to this setup is that you get the entire combined capacity of the individual drives as available storage. 
For example, these are three 500 gigabyte drives, and if I were to put them into a RAID 0 array, I would have 1500 gigabytes available to use, or one and a half terabytes. But the downside to this setup is reliability. Let's say, for example, that I lose this middle chunk of the yellow data here, perhaps from a sector error or something. You can see that with what's left over, there's no way to tell what was originally supposed to be there. The RAID controller can't reconstruct it, the computer doesn't have any idea what's going on, so that yellow data is just gone. And every drive you have multiplies the odds of that happening at some point. Even worse is if an entire hard drive fails for some reason. Well, that dead hard drive took all of its data chunks with it, and there's just not enough left over on the other drives to reconstruct it, or get it back or anything, so all of your data is just gone. Hope you had a backup. And remember, every drive that you add to an array adds a failure point. This 3-drive array has a 3 times higher chance of something breaking at some point than just a single disk. A 4-drive array would have a 4 times higher chance and RAID 0 has absolutely no mechanisms built into it to recover the data. It is strictly a speed solution. It's a very live fast and die hard kind of setup. Now let's move on to RAID 1, also known as mirroring. RAID 1 is a lot more easy to understand. All of the drives in the array are just copies of each other. The computer creates some data, the RAID controller copies that data to all of the drives in the array. For example, in this 3-drive array, now you have three copies of the data. We need at least two drives to do this setup. The advantage of this is pretty clear, I would hope. Let's say something screws up with this drive and it corrupts its copy of the data. Well, you've still got more copies, so no problem. And this is where RAID Controllers' error detection comes in, because most RAID Controllers will tell that something is screwed up with the data and attempt to recover this sector and then rewrite it. And even in a worst case scenario, if, say, your entire hard drive dies again for mysterious reasons, most RAID controllers allow you to simply remove the dead disk and replace it with a new one. The RAID controller will then start writing the data back over to that, and bam, now it's part of the array. And you can do this while the entire system is live in most cases. The end users and the computer won't even notice, sometimes. This system offers the best fault tolerance, because you could lose almost the entire array except for one hard drive, and the system would still be live. Now, most sysadmins would be running around scrambling to replace the drives, but that's, that's what it lets you do. And as a bonus, with some RAID controllers, you get the read speed advantages that you would get with RAID 0. See, it has to write an entire copy of the data to every hard drive, there's no getting around that, that's the whole point of the setup. But a lot of RAID controllers are smart enough to only request a portion of the data from each individual hard drive, even though the hard drive has the entire copy, and the hard drive will just send back a part of it, the RAID controller combines them all and sends it back to the PC just like RAID 0. So you get increased read speeds, just not any increased write speeds. The disadvantage is that because each drive is just a copy of the other ones, you don't get any increased storage space with any of those. For example, these are three 500 gig hard drives, and if I put them all in a RAID 1 array, the total space of the array would be 500 gigs. It would just be 500 gigs copied to each drive. Alright, so let's get this cleared away and we'll move on to talking about the next solution, which is RAID 10, or RAID 1 plus 0, depending on who you ask. This setup requires at least four drives, and it's called RAID 10, or RAID 1 plus 0, because it's actually a combination of the last two RAID systems that we talked about. So let's go through this step by step and show you how this works. First, I'll take away two of these drives. So our computer's got some data, and it passes it off to the RAID controller. So what's the RAID controller do first? Well, it cuts the data in half, just like it would with RAID 0, and it places it on the disk like so. So far this is a typical RAID 0 setup, but aha, we have these extra two drives. And what's on these other two drives? Well, they're copies of the split data from the first pair of drives, arranged on the disk like so see that it's the same data, split, and then those splits are copied. Those splits are called stripes, by the way. So you can see why this is called RAID 10 or RAID 1 plus 0. 
because we have the data striped like we did in RAID 0, and then those stripes are mirrored like they are in RAID 1. This combines the speed benefits of RAID 0 with the fault tolerance of RAID 1. For example, if I lost this chunk of data right here, I'd be fine because you can see there's still a copy on the other disk. The RAID controller will detect the error and hopefully write it back, like so. Let's say I lose not only this data, but I lose the entire drive. Well, the RAID controller will pick that up, alert me that I replaced the drive, and the RAID controller will go about copying the data that's supposed to be on there from the mirror of it. This system can handle losing half of the hard drives as long as you don't lose an entire stripe of data. For example, losing two hard drives like this is fine because you can still see that we have the whole data split between the disks that are left, like that. However, if we lose these two disks, well, we're screwed because now half of the data is just completely gone. With this in mind, the disadvantage to this system is that you only get half of the total storage space of all of the drives as available storage. For example, these are four 500 gig hard drives, which means that they add up to two terabytes. But because the data is replicated, I only have one terabyte available as actual storage using this setup. This is also a good opportunity to point out that RAID is not a backup. RAID is a method of making sure that you don't have downtime if you have an individual disk failure, but it does not prevent all disasters and you still need an off-site backup of your data somewhere. We just saw how we could lose all of our data even on this complicated array. So let's move on to the last and a little bit more difficult to understand common form of RAID, which is RAID 5, also known as Parity. Actually, um, there are a lot of RAID levels that have parity, but this is the most common one, so just, just roll with it, okay? So for this setup, you need a minimum of three disks. And to explain how this works, just kind of follow along as we write data to the array. The computer creates some data, and it passes it off to the RAID controller, like you would expect. The RAID controller then splits the data, but not in as many disks as there are. It splits the data in as many disks as there are minus one. So for this three drive array, it's split in half, and the halves of the data are written to those two disks like so. But what's up with the third disk? Well, what's written to the third disk is information called parity. Parity is basically complicated mathematical mumbo jumbo that is the result of running these two chunks of data into a formula. And the output of the formula is the parity information here. This mathematical formula is special though in that the output of that formula can be used to reconstruct either of the two halves of data that may go missing, as long as you only lose half of the data. So for example, say that we have a disk sector error and we lose this part of the data. Well, when the RAID controller detects the error, or you replace the disk, it can use the parity information plus the half of the data that's still there to reconstruct the missing data. It can do the same thing if the other half of the data goes missing. It simply uses the parity information combined with the half of the data that's still there to reconstruct the data that went missing. Now, it doesn't use one drive exclusively for parity. Let's write some more data to it. The RAID controller splits up the data just like this, but instead of writing it like that, it writes it like this. And then it puts the parity information on this drive. This prevents us from losing all of our parity information if we have an entire drive fail. Let's write even more data to it. We split up the data, and this time we split the data there, and we put the parity information on this drive. Again, this is done to prevent losing all of our parity information in the case of an entire drive failure. We distribute the load, therefore we distribute the risk. There is a version of this with a dedicated parity drive and it's RAID 4. However, it's not very commonly used because it's a terrible idea. So, the advantage of this system is that you have pretty good fault tolerance against data loss. If you lose a sector, or sometimes even an entire drive, the data can be reconstructed from the information that's left using the parity bits and the other bits of the data. If you have a four drive RAID 5 system, the data would be split into three parts and then parity information would be written to the fourth disk and so on and so forth. 
This means that your total storage capacity is the combination of all of the drives minus one. So for example, these are three 500 gigabyte hard drives. They have a total space of 1.5 terabytes. However, if I were to put them in RAID 5 like this, my effective storage would be one terabyte because 500 gigabytes of it would be stored as parity information, which would be spread across the disks like we've shown. So you get more available useful drive space than you would with RAID 10. However, you get somewhat less fault tolerance as a system like this would not be able to handle two simultaneous whole drive failures, whereas RAID 10 could handle theoretically half of your drives failing, depending on which drives fail anyway. Well, that's all I got today for everyone. Um, I left out some technical details like block sizes and what blocks are and what happens if you mix drive capacities. Just, just, just don't mix drive capacities. You waste a ton of space no matter what you do, and it, it, just, just, just don't do it. Um, Bye.